Welcome back. In this session, we're going to talk about how to determine both film thickness and refractive index for your transparent films. Now, first, we'll have to estimate what is the index of refraction. We're going to use the Cauchy layer to describe the index versus wavelength. I'll show you all of the analysis steps and finally, how you can graph your optical constants. Now, transparent films are going to be a very common application for ellipsometry. Uh, you can measure the film thickness and the index of refraction, and many of the layers that you're going to work with will be transparent, at least at some of the wavelengths that you're measuring. Uh, they can include dielectrics, organics, even some semiconductors if you're looking at long enough wavelengths. Okay, I've shown a few here. Um, let's consider the shape of the data. Now, if you're looking at films that are on a silicon substrate, silicon has a very high index of refraction, near 3.5 to 4. So as your film gets higher as well, your peaks will actually dampen. Okay? Notice the bare silicon substrate shown here as a solid curve is actually representing almost a lower envelope for our data curves. And then as I introduced a film on top of it with different varying index of refraction, an index of 1.5 had very high peaks. Index of 1.75, the peaks were starting to get smaller. And I'm going to concentrate my focus on the longer wavelengths where the silicon substrate is also primarily transparent because then the peaks will follow this natural progression. What's nice here is this natural progression as the index of refraction for my film gets larger, the peaks start to dampen their amplitudes. Now what I don't show is that the peaks also will shift right and left. I've corrected for that by adjusting the film thickness. Now this will be very easy to follow as long as we're on a silicon substrate, but as soon as we change to a different substrate, let's say glass, then all of the rules change. Glass has a very low index of refraction, near 1.5, and now you'll see that it's actually looking like the upper envelope for my data oscillations. And as I increase the index of refraction for my film, the valleys are actually getting lower and lower until I get up to a certain point and they inflect and start to come back. Okay? But it's mainly the amplitude of these psi oscillations that we're going to use to estimate the index of refraction for our film. Next, we need a model that will allow us to adjust the index of refraction for any unknown film. And in, that, in most cases, we're going to go to our friend the Cauchy dispersion relation. Now, the Cauchy is a simple empirical equation that describes the index of refraction versus wavelength by three fit parameters. A, B, and C. A is the amplitude, while B and C give the Cauchy, the index of refraction, a little bit of curvature versus wavelength. And I show that in this graph. If A is equal to 1.5, it would be constant at all wavelengths. But a more physical shape is for the index of refraction to increase as you go to shorter wavelengths, which we can do by adding very small amounts of B and C. Now we're ready to tackle our transparent thin films, and the procedure that we're going to follow is as, as shown here. First, we're going to estimate the index of refraction for our film using the A parameter of our Cauchy. Second, we're going to estimate the thickness of the film based on the number of oscillations, just as we saw in the previous session. Next, we're going to actually fit for the thickness, the A parameter, and even the B parameter and see if we can get a good match to the data. If we can, then we can always add extra complications such as the C parameter of the Cauchy, roughness, grading, or even anisotropy to see if we can improve the match. But the first three steps of this are the most critical. So let's demonstrate those in complete ease. This is an organic film on silicon. So remember silicon has a high index. Let's start with a silicon with transparent film model from our basic library and you'll see that it uses the Cauchy layer. Let me expand that Cauchy layer and it's starting with an index of 1.5. So when I generate you'll notice that it has a certain number of peaks and if I change my thickness I'm going to set it to a very high value I could get more and more peaks and valleys in my data. 
Now, it can sometimes be easier to look at just one curve instead of all three curves. And to do that, I go to the data panel and choose set ranges and then just grab one of my curves so that when I generate, I can see which curve I'm trying to match. Now, remember our first step. The first step is to estimate the index of refraction. And using the same mouse roller wheel feature that we introduced last time, I can position that over the A parameter of my Cauchy, and I can slowly roll the index. As I increase the index of refraction by increasing the A parameter, Notice that my peaks get smaller and smaller. So this is obviously the wrong index of refraction, and I need to lower it back until the peak heights are just about the right height, somewhere in the 1.6 range for this film. After I've e estimated the index of refraction, now I can adjust the thickness, which will not change the peak heights, but will change the number of oscillations. Notice when I get over to about 1,600 nanometers, fits pretty well. When I press the fit button now, it can adjust both the thickness and the Cauchy A, B, and in this case the C parameter, which is already turned on to try to match the data. I get a good fit to this angle, but never forget to include all of your data before continuing. Let's press fit one more time. We get a good nice match to both psi and delta for this film at all wavelengths. The final step here is to make sure that I have a good result. The thickness looks good. How do I look at the optical constants of my film? Well, if I right click on the Cauchy name, you'll notice the first menu down is that I can graph the layer optical constants, and that shows me the index of refraction versus wavelength for this Cauchy film, uh, which is my organic. Nice index near 1.6, which is very common for organic layers. And it, it decreases as we go to longer wavelengths, which in a later session we will find is important because that's a nice, physically plausible shape for a transparent layer. All right, we've gone through the process. We've graphed the layer optical constants by right-clicking on the Cauchy name. And that sums up basically how you fit a transparent film. I hope you'll stay with me for next time as I show you how you can report your results.